Some of the most stunning attractions in the world are in Rome, but traveling to Rome can be a bit… challenging. As a tour guide, I want to share with you all the basics you need to know before going to Rome, Italy. They include a list of main attractions, must-try food, when is the best time to visit, where to stay, how many days to spend and the best ways to get around the city. Oh, and I'll finish this video with my favorite Rome tips and tricks. Rome's amazing heritage includes one of the seven wonders of the world, the best preserved ancient Roman monument in the world, the biggest church in the world, and even the entire country, although it is the smallest country in the world. The Eternal City is also famous for its beautiful historical squares, like impressive Piazza Venezia, celebrating the unification of Italy, the most beautiful baroque square of Piazza Navona, a Renaissance square designed by famous Michelangelo, and some very old squares, like Forum Romanum, the heart of the ancient Roman Empire. Rome also has other world-famous attractions, like one of the widest, longest and most popular staircases in Europe, the largest, the most impressive and the most famous fountain, and one of the most charming bridges connected to an ancient round castle with a secret passage. But the cherry on the top is Rome's culinary experience. People of Rome start a day with a sweet bread roll stuffed with cream called maritoso. The name translates to almost husband, as romantic Italian young men use the bun's filling to hide rings and offer them to their future wives on Valentine's Day. As Italians always find a reason to celebrate, this sweet bread roll got its celebration day on December the 1st. Surprisingly, ancient Rome had fried street food places, and two millennia later, it's no different. The most popular snack in Rome is essentially a deep-fried rice ball called supli. It's made of ground beef or chicken, cooked with tomato sauce and rice until the mixture is thick and creamy. Then the mixture is set aside to cool and formed into egg-shaped parcel around a piece of mozzarella. The whole thing is then breaded and deep-fried and it is absolutely delicious. Another mouth-watering street food is porchetta. It is a sandwich stuffed with a deboned piece of pork, seasoned with salt and herbs before being slow roasted. Porchetta can be found in small shops, delis or kiosks where thick slices are put into local bread or pizza bianca. The most popular dish in all Italian restaurants is pasta and Rome has its four classics. Grizia, Cacio e Pepe, Amatriciana, and my favorite, Carbonara, named after Carbonari, woodcutters and charcoal makers who lived in the Apennine Mountains northeast of Rome. They prepared this dish directly over charcoal fire from simple farm ingredients like eggs, cured pig cheek, pecorino cheese, black pepper, and pasta, as it provided them with a lot of energy for the hard-working day. But the symbol of Roman cuisine is saltimbocca alla romana. It can be found on every menu and consists of tender, pan-fried veal cutlets that are warped in Italian prosciutto, flavored with fresh sage and quickly cooked in white wine and butter. I know it all sounds delicious, but before you start packing, let's check when is the best time to visit Rome. Although Rome is one of few European cities worth visiting all year, the most ideal time is spring and autumn. But to save some cash and avoid crowds, consider winter. Between November and March, the rates are the lowest, there is no snow and temperatures are cool. The streets are somewhat alive as restaurants set up outdoor heaters, sites have shorter hours, but most tourist businesses tend to stay open. On the other hand, you should simply avoid Rome in July and August. The city gets very busy and temperatures can soar above 100 Fahrenheit or 35 centigrades. Sightseeing in that kind of heat is no fun. The very best months to visit are April, May, June, September and October. Rome is big, but its public transport is not the greatest. So staying close to the main attractions is a good idea and all of them are in the historic city center. On Booking.com I would recommend the following six areas. Trastevere, Navona, Pantheon, Trevi, Spagna and Colosseo. 
They are close to seven founding hills of Rome where ancient city was born. All seven hills are east of the river Tiber and present-day Rome developed around its ancient remains. Only the Vatican City and San Angelo Castle are west of the river. Of the six areas, Navona District is my favorite. It covers the area around beautiful Navona Square and is within a walking distance of many attractions. Its maze of charming old streets offers nice shopping and great restaurants. And how many nights should you book? Be sure to book at least three nights to see all the main attractions and enjoy the most delicious meals. Moreover, some attractions like the Forum Romanum and the Vatican Museums can easily take up more than half of your day each. So three nights is the minimum, but four is even better. But no matter how many nights you book, you can maximize your time in Rome by combining walking with public transport. Walking can get a bit challenging when navigating narrow alleys and crossing busy streets. It can also get really tiring, as a walk from the Vatican Museums to the Colosseum takes about one hour. In most cases, you can forget about the tram and metro, as they have almost no lines in the historic city center. So you are left with taxis, buses and e-scooters. Buses go everywhere, but they can get crowded and hot. In most cases, you cannot buy a ticket on the bus. You must get them before boarding at any tobacco shop or newsstands. After boarding, ticket must be validated and can be used for the next 100 minutes. The same ticket can be used on any public transport, including metro and tram. But figuring out where buses go or even finding a bus station can be a bit challenging, so you can help yourself by getting an app linked in the description below. Really handy option to get around Rome is also hop on, hop off bus. With 24, 48 or 72 hour ticket, you can hop from one attraction to another while also getting engaging commentary on the way. I'll link my favorite one in the description below. E-scooters and e-bikes are absolutely everywhere in Rome. They were introduced as an alternative to the public transportation during the global pandemic and are great if you dare to join the crazy Italian traffic. You can find them near main attractions, as they can be used in almost the entire historic center and in pedestrian areas. E-scooters are provided by several companies, and all you need is an app and a credit card. Now you just need my favorite tips and tricks, and you'll be ready to go! The most important tip is to buy tickets online and well ahead. Regardless of the season, Rome is the most visited city in Italy and one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world, so you should always book ahead. Thanks to the global pandemic, online tickets are now available for almost all Roman attractions, but there are some caveats. First one comes with the most popular site in Rome, the Colosseum. Most Colosseum tickets include access to Roman Forum with Palatine Hill. There are several options available, but their naming is a bit confusing. There are two full experience tickets, but they don't really offer full experience as they don't give you full access. My tip is to pick full experience undergrounds and arena ticket as it gives you access to the very cool underground section of Colosseum. The full experience tickets offer extra access to the arena and include extra sites in the Roman Forum, but those will most likely be closed for various reasons or too busy to enter anyway. You should also get the Parco Colosseo app. Besides buying tickets, the app also offers various itineraries with audio guide. I'll put the link to the app in the description below. There are also caveats when visiting Pantheon, the best preserved Roman monument in the world. It has been used as a Roman Catholic church since the year 609 and that is why it is closed for services on Saturdays at 5 pm and on Sundays at 10.30 am. But since this is a church, there are no tickets, as all churches in Rome are free of charge. That is why you can spend a lot of time in queue to get in. The trick is to book a guided tour of the Pantheon with specific time slot. This way, you can save a lot of time and you also get a 45-minute tour of the site. But to be allowed to enter to Pantheon or any other church in Rome, you must respect a dress code. Your shoulders, cleavage and knees should be covered at all times. This means that shorts, skirts and dresses ending above your knees are not allowed and the same goes for ripped jeans and see-through clothing. 
You should also cover any offensive tattoo or religious symbol and remove any hats or caps. The same dress code also applies for the entire Vatican City. The guards have the right to refuse you access into the city and its attractions if you don't follow the dress code. I also know a few tricks for St. Peter's Basilica. As this is also a church, there are no tickets. To get in, you need to go through a mandatory security check and queues can get very long. First trick to avoid them is to show up early and beat the crowds as the basilica opens already at 7 am. Second trick is to book one of the guided tours with a specific time slot as most of them will get you through the security check much faster. All tours and tickets I mentioned in this video can be found in the description below. Another important tip is about safety. The city is safe, but petty crime is a problem as Rome is the second most pickpocketed city in Europe. Pickpockets are extremely skilled, especially on public transport and crowded places. Leave your valuables in a safe, don't carry large amounts of cash with you and always keep your belongings in front pockets and your bags in sight. Last but not least, check my favorite Rome tours and tickets in the description below. To learn more about the best things to do in Rome, watch my video in the top right corner. Super thanks for the thumbs up and for watching and see you next time.